Well, hello, New Hopers, and I hope you're having a great weekend. I'm excited to meet with you as we continue in our series called Peacemakers Live Like Jesus. In Matthew 5, 9, Jesus tells his disciples, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Peacemakers is an essential characteristic of being a Christ follower. Notice the word peacemakers. Peace has to be made, right? It's not something that just happens, but it has to be intentional when it comes to making peace. You know, it's interesting that our sinful nature makes us peace breakers. So Jesus calls us to be peacemakers. This is especially important in today's world where we have these tensions right now, especially of black and white racial conflict. This is why we are in this series called Peacemakers Live Like Jesus, based on 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 11 through 21. You know, we started our first week talking about peacemakers start with Jesus. Why? Because Jesus' love compels us. Because when we became Christ followers, we left our old life and we started to live a different life. This last Sunday, we talked about peacemakers see like Jesus. And Paul talked about how from here on in, we regard no one else with a worldly point of view. And so this week, I want to focus on the idea of peacemakers speak like Jesus. So Paul lets Christ followers in the church of Corinth know that now in Jesus, it is Jesus' love that compels us. We die to our old self. We regard no one any longer by viewing them from the world's standards. Why? Because we are a new creation in Christ. The old is gone and the new now has come. With this news of transformation, Paul says to the church in Corinth that they now have a message of reconciliation to bring to the world. I'm sitting in front of the Isani County Courthouse because daily reconciliation of relationships take place here. And this is the whole idea of Jesus' death on the cross, that we would be made right with God and that we would be made right with one another. So that's why Paul is saying to us now, hey, we have this message of reconciliation, helping people be made right with God and with one another. So that's why today I wanna to talk about peacemakers speak like Jesus. So Paul says this in 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 19. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed now to us the message of reconciliation. He wants us to go forth and to speak of reconciliation unto others. The first chapter in Genesis tells us about God's creation. God created the heavens and God created the earth. God saw all that he had made and it was good. He then created man and woman and declared that they were very good. Adam and Eve lived in God's land under God's blessings. People experienced shalom, peace with God, each other, and the environment around them. The Hebrew word for shalom is used in many places in the Bible. 
It's translated into our English word, peace. The modern English definition of peace is the absence of tension or conflict or war. But the word shalom goes beyond this. It means completeness or wholeness with God, with others and with God's creation. This is a picture Jesus desires us to have after we are reconciled with him, to have this wholeness, not just in our relationship with God, but our wholeness in relationship with one another and also the environment. This is a different picture than just regular word peace. You can have maybe peace with somebody as long as you don't say anything mean about them, even though you don't like them. But when it comes to shalom or peace as a Christ follower, it means that there's this wholeness of relationship where we actually love one another as Christ loves us. We care for one another. We make amends for one another. We forgive one another. And we're in unity with all others. This is the bigger picture of what shalom is and the result of reconciliation. And this is the desire that God, I believe, desires for us, his children, when it comes to black and white relationships, that we have shalom. We have this completeness, this wholeness of relationship. But we see, however, in Genesis 3, we are told that God's creation was spoiled by sin. The shalom in the Garden of Eden was destroyed. People's relationship with God was broken. This resulted in relationships between people and between people and the environment to be broken as well. And thus, that is why Jesus came into the world to make that relationship right again between us and God, between us and others, and us and our environment. You know, the rest of the Bible story, really from Genesis on, is the story of restoration, of reconciliation between God and his people, between each other and his creation. Colossians 1, 19 and 20 says this, For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, meaning Jesus Christ, and through him to reconcile himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Jesus brings people back into right relationship with God, with each other, and with creation as a whole. It's interesting that in the New Testament, upon Jesus' death in Matthew 27, 51, it says this, at that moment, the curtain or the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The veil was in place in the Jewish temple, separating men from God. The high priest could be the only one that would be allowed into the Holy of Holies once a year on the Day of Atonement to bring sacrifice for Israel's sins. Matter of fact, they would tie a rope to the high priest's ankle when he went into the Holy of Holies just in case something would happen and they would have to pull him out because nobody else was allowed to go in and be in God's presence. The veil, the curtain, separated God from everyone else. You know, it's interesting the design of the temple where the Jews worshiped. It started out in the outer court where it was called the court of the Gentiles. That's where the Gentiles could meet, but they could go no further. There was a sign between the court of Gentiles and the court of women. And the sign said to any Gentile who would pass this gate, they would succumb to death. I mean, that's how serious it was if a Gentile tried to get closer to the Holy of Holies. But then you had the court 
of women, which was for Jewish women. But then from there, you had the court of Israel, which was for Jewish laymen. And then you have the court of Israel, which was for the common Jewish man. But then the court of the priests, which served the temple. But from there, it was the holy of holies, meaning just for the high priest to go in once a year. That's what separated us from God, this big curtain. And it was a picture of our sin separating us from a relationship with God. But when Jesus died on the cross in Matthew 27, it said at that moment, that veil was ripped from top to bottom. It was a very thick veil. It was made of violet, which was of royal color. It had in it sewn in cherubim, angels, because angels were ones who protected God, protected people from being in his presence. It sort of gives us this picture of going all the way back to Genesis when Adam and Eve sinned and were escorted out of the garden, out of God's presence. God put cherubim, angels, at the entrance to keep them from his presence. Why? Because God is holy and we are sinful. But we see that through the cross, Jesus comes, rips this veil, this curtain, so that we now can have relationship with him. We can now be reconciled, made right with him. This is a picture of what it looks like for us to be made right with our black brothers and sisters, with our white brothers and sisters, with all those of different racial cultures. God brought reconciliation between our relationship and him. And with that reconciliation, he calls us now as Christ followers to be peacemakers and to speak the message of reconciliation, making right our relationship amongst our black brothers and sisters, our white brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters of all nationalities. That is God's desire for us. And that is what Paul speaks of when he says, now we have this message of reconciliation, making right relationships with others. And we as Christ followers should speak of this and should communicate this out in our world today. You know, at this courthouse, as I said earlier, there's all kinds of individuals that walk into this courthouse with estranged relationships. And they meet before a judge. And they talk it out and figure it out. And many of those relationships walk out reconciled, made right. And that's the picture of the cross. And that's the picture of the message that Paul says now we are to have as Christ followers. We are to be peacemakers and speak like Jesus. You know, I have Band-Aids here. And what do Band-Aids do? They take skin that has been separated and they provide it to come together and to heal. And once you pull that Band-Aid off, you can't see where there was the separation anymore. There was that healing. I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm wearing these $1 sunglasses from the dollar store. And they're broken. They've separated. But what I need to do is I need to go and put glue on them to bring the two separated pieces back together. And that is the beauty of the cross, of what Jesus has done for us. He has allowed us to have racial reconciliation, not out of our power, but out of his power and what he did for us on the cross. And so Paul's challenge to us in 2 Corinthians 
chapter 5, 18 and 19, is that because we have experienced reconciliation, we are now to go out and reconcile our relationship amongst others because it is reconciled, it is made right with our God. So my challenge to each one of us here at New Hope is to go and to spread the message of reconciliation and that it would start with us being right with our black brothers and sisters and that they would be right with their white brothers and sisters and that we would reach out to all nationalities and be reconciled and made right. So let's pursue that new hope and let's be reconcilers in our day-to-day -day life. Let's pray. Father God, I pray that you would help us to be serious about this message of reconciliation. Because when Jesus died on the cross, the curtain was torn and we were allowed to have relationship with him. We are made right with our God. And I pray that from that, we would go and be made right with our brothers and sisters of color. And Lord God, that you would give us the power to do so. I pray that we'd be serious about this because you call us to this as Christ followers. You call us to love our neighbors as ourselves. You call us to love one another as Christ has loved us. So I ask this and pray this over each new hoper in your holy name. Amen. Have a great day, New Hope.